Hello there, Jeff here with the Big Shooter's channel. Thanks for tuning in. We're back on the range to follow up with a video uh, introduction that we did recently on the Hudson uh, 35 caliber big bore carnivore. Uh, this is the integrally suppressed bolt action. Uh, there's a six round magazine uh, rifle that is neither an NFA firearm or a firearm at all for that matter. And today we brought some equipment out so we can answer all the questions that you've been asking me and I can learn too. Stick around, this is gonna be fun. Sometimes the best thing I can do when I'm looking to do research is listen to you, uh, my peers, and because you ask questions that I might not think to answer. And man, you asked some fantastic questions when I uploaded the introductory video. I'll put a link to that uh, in the description below in case you want to check that one out too. But today, uh, it's the nuts and bolts. We're going to get into the technical aspects of this. It's an air rifle. So it's not uh, regulated like a firearm. This is something you can purchase uh, through the mail. You don't need a dealer. Uh, it's just a non-gun. It's an air rifle. It's fed uh, through a tank. This uh, air cylinder right here holds 200 bar or just under 3,000 uh, foot-pounds of compressed air. And you can fill that either with a hand pump or through a scuba tank. I've elected to get an adapter to fill it through a scuba tank. The projectiles I'm firing today, uh, they're .357 uh, caliber projectiles. It is um, the Diablo ammunition. And from what I understand, the ammunition is very specific uh, to these firearms. In this case, because it has a magazine, we have to be concerned about the length, where you may not with some of the guns that are, are single shot and you have to feed it each time. This actually has a rotary magazine, and for obvious reasons, the projectiles can't be longer than the magazine is. They're 81 grain uh, projectiles, so again, this isn't uh, this isn't your granddad's BB gun, a pellet rifle. This thing has some serious power, and that's what we're here to get to the bottom of today. So some of you, like me, have had a, a hard time initially wrapping your head around uh, the fact that an air rifle can be as powerful as this thing is, uh, and and it's it's I mean it's really amazing, and that's what we're gonna we're gonna study a little bit today. When you really look at ballistics, there are only a few factors that are, that are important. You have the weight and the size of the projectile. In this case, we're, we're dealing with a projectile that's 81 grains. You have the ballistic coefficient, which determines how easy it can cut through the air and, and, and really hold itself stable to be able to hit at long ranges. And then you have muzzle velocity. Those are the three big factors. And the fact that it's coming from compressed air rather than a, a gunpowder or, or a case, a cartridge, and a primer uh, like normal really doesn't come into play at all. To charge the carnivore big bore, um, you can use a, a hand pump or you can use a scuba tank. And I've chosen the latter. I'm using a scuba tank. Uh, all you do is plug uh, their adapter into the magazine and very, very slowly fill it. There's a gauge on the end of the magazine that shows when you're up to pressure. And the maximum pressure should be right around 200 bar. That's going to give you consistent shooting for somewhere around 12 rounds before you're going to notice a degradation in uh, accuracy and in muzzle velocity. Today, we're going to test muzzle velocity. The projectiles are loaded in a uh, six-shot cylinder. Looks similar to the cylinder on a revolver. And each time you cycle the bolt, it cycles the cylinder and brings another round in. There are also safeties in place so you can't double charge a rifle that, that's already been charged. Today we're using the Caldwell Ballistic Precision Chronograph and it's really cool to have an app uh, that works with your smartphone so I can read all of the readings here and collect the data and you can also see it on the screen as well. Let's run um, one magazine and one cylinder through it, six rounds. Let's get an average uh, of what the muzzle velocity is and then let's continue to run rounds until we find where it drops off to where we can expect um, a loss in power and accuracy. Six 
633 feet per second. Six hundred and thirty four feet per second. Six hundred and thirty six feet per second. Six forty five. 647, 653, that's screaming, that's going to give us an average, see if I can be as smart as the equipment that I'm using, 641.3 feet per second. 641 feet per second on average uh, and we'll talk about why that's important in a minute let's run uh, another magazine through it now and uh, see where that starts to drop off Four. Six sixty. Six fifty eight. Six fifty one. Six sixty four, six sixty five. We're not there yet. Let's load up a few more uh, cylinders and see what it's going to take. That's really cool so far. So at twelve rounds fired, uh, the average of twelve shots uh, is still at six hundred and fifty feet per second, right on the nose. Let's continue on and see where it starts to drop off. Six sixty six, so we're not dropping yet. Six sixty nine, six sixty four, six sixty four again. Six sixty seven, six sixty three. Now that's eighteen rounds. This is awesome. Back to 666. Six fifty three. That's the 20th round fired. That's far over what I thought you could get with this. Six forty three. Maybe now we'll start to see that start heading south. 628, yeah, it looks like we've got a pattern developing here. 619, yep, definitely heading south. Okay, 
rather than waste ammo, let's, uh, because I'm getting low, <laughs> I'm shooting this a lot more than I thought I was going to. Um, we'll stop it there. So we're getting almost 20 rounds uh, out of this thing without any degradation in muzzle velocity whatsoever. And that's going to be uh, reflected downrange in the accuracy as well. So uh, 20 rounds out of one magazine or one cylinder of air. That's very, very cool. And, and far above what I expected according to the manufacturer's specifications. In pressure, that brought us down to about 125 bar. So we used about half of the pressure. And all you do is spin the cylinder clockwise and then we can remove it and refill and get back to shooting. Now when we're discussing pressure, uh, held in the cylinder, it's measured in bar, B-A-R. One bar is 14.5 PSI. So this gun holds 200 bar. Multiplied by 14.5, that's about 2,900 PSI that it holds, just under 3,000. One number that's really important to remember when you're dealing with uh, muzzle velocity and trying to convert it to muzzle energy to figure out really how hard this thing is hitting uh, is the number 671. And I apologize if I'm going a little bit too far back to basics for some of you, but I promise some of us uh, haven't been involved with the conversion of muzzle velocity to muzzle energy. 671 is important because when you're discussing the, the, the impact, the power that, that this projectile really has when it's, when it's hitting your, your target, um, at, at 671 feet per second, that's where the weight of the projectile equals the muzzle energy. So if you have a 100 grain projectile and, and you're firing it at 671 feet per second, your muzzle energy is 100 foot pounds. If it's a 500 grain projectile and it's traveling at 671 feet per second, you have 500 foot pounds of energy. So that number 671 helps you do calculations in your mind. If somebody says to you, I have a rifle and it's using 130 grain projectile and it's traveling at uh, 900 feet per second and it, that equals uh, 300 foot pounds or 400 foot pounds, you're going to know that's not even close. The weight of the projectile, the 671 feet per second, is the same as the muzzle energy in foot pounds. And I hope that that helps clear things up a little bit. The manufacturer suggested retail on this rifle uh, without any of the fancy accessories like filling from the scuba tank and that type of thing uh, is just under $800. That's a lot of performance for that kind of money. A suppressed bolt action repeater uh, 35 caliber rifle for under 800 bucks. That's awesome. And the fact that you don't have to wait six months for it and, and get permission from your local chief of police to own it, that's pretty awesome too. So I hope you enjoyed this, this video a little bit more in depth than the, the intro that we did. Uh, we're going to do something a lot more in depth once my ballistic gel is done. Uh, so, so keep your eyes on the channel. Uh, if you did enjoy it, please click like. Share us with your friends in your vast social media universe. If you don't subscribe to the channel, please click subscribe. It's a big help. And until next time, have fun and be safe.